We are live now. Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. I am Dr. Mo Anderson, and I am here representing Drop the Drugs. Third time's a charm. We're going to get this bad boy going today. But I'm very excited to have a special guest from the uh, Atlanta, Greater Atlanta area. Gary Bowers is a recovery advocate for Recovery Local and our organizations uh, tie in. We just met via email. He reached out to me, but he found us online because Drop the Drugs is a resource and information hub for those uh, with substance abuse problems, with addiction problems. We're trying to raise awareness about ways to decrease access, decrease poisonings, decrease overdose with simple safety tips you can do in your home. We have things on our website, we're posting videos, we're posting uh, memes, movies, anything we can to encourage you to safely secure your prescription drugs um, and to keep them out of reach and the ones you don't need. Today is DEA Take Back Day. Gary, yay. Yeah. Twice a year. Yeah. And uh, this year is the first time we've been able to have it. It was canceled in the spring because of COVID, uh, which is leading, I think, to even more uh, addiction and abuse. But enough about us. We'll, we'll share a little bit more about Drop the Drugs. If you're new here, you're seeing us for the first time learning about us, please like our page and share this information. And our, I will happily welcome our expert today, Gary Bowers from recoverylocal.org. Thank you for joining me, Gary. Hi, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm glad we're working now. It's all good. Uh, things happen. And uh, if, if there's anything this year has taught us, it's that we have to learn how to roll with the punches. And Absolutely. yeah, I just wanted to say, just to kind of echo what you said, uh, you know, my experience and meeting you, Dr. Mo, was, uh, you know, it just made so much sense. And, and the more I learned about your mission and, and your, your personal story, uh, it just, it, it became so much clearer to me that, that you're just somebody out there doing much the same thing that I want to do, just helping people. There's uh, no shortage of people that need help right now. Right. And, uh, and the fact that you have this mission to put, drop the drugs and help people realize the dangers of drugs around the house and, um, ties in perfectly to what I do. So it was match made in heaven and I'm happy to be here. So thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we connected. Your uh, personal story that you shared with me is rather remarkable. The fact that you're sitting there now home with your family healthy and doing well is just a testament to the human spirit. I want to start with just talking about, I mean, we said in the intro um, that we've been posting, inviting people to join us, that you have, uh, you're in long-term recovery. But tell us about how you, you know, first got introduced to drugs and alcohol and how that led to addiction. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to. Uh, you know, to be honest, really, drugs and alcohol have been a part of my life for most of my life, you know. Uh, you know, even before I had picked up the first drug or the first drink, I had been exposed to drugs and alcohol through, uh, you know, through friends, through older people in my family. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, it was just one of those things too, where it, it almost did feel like a rite of passage. And mm -hmm. I felt like I needed to grow up and be a man and do these, cool manly things and uh, you know sadly sadly in my case you know that uh, you know drugs and alcohol quickly took hold of me and uh, led me down some pretty dark places in my life but uh, through the grace of God and and some grateful mentors that I've had in my life I've been able to um, straighten that out I live a very sober happy life right now so drug free today well, that, that's wonderful. That's, and that's the big thing is today. You know, we've all got some stuff in our past. Like you, I saw um, 
there wasn't, I won't say so much addiction that I was aware of in my family, but people smoked, people drank, particularly adults. And so in my mind as a kid, I kind of thought, well, if you're grown, that's what you do. And I remember trying to, you know, sneak off with cigarettes or if, you know, a can of beer was left somewhere. That was one of the worst nights of my life as a child trying to finish off something that didn't get discarded. Oh, I didn't drink till I was in college after that. It was like, oh my goodness, this is terrible. Why do people want to do this? But to the point of environment is important. And as adults, you know, as parents, I'm a grandparent as well. It's, you know, important that we talk to our kids about drugs, alcohol, images that they see in the media, uh, and how, you know, the commercials, all of that can lead them to have a perception of something not being dangerous that can be uh, very dangerous when it's not done in moderation. And for some people, it shouldn't be done at all because of the chemical makeup of their body. So, you know, a lot of us have friends and colleagues dealing with addiction, uh, alcohol that we may see more readily, may be aware of but a lot of people are addicted to prescription drugs or abusing them, just taking them for off-label for reasons they weren't prescribed for, you know, it's for the toothache, they're taking it for the ankle, for the back, and all of that can lead to addiction, and a lot of times it's hidden, just like uh, alcoholism, but you shared that you had a friend um, who lost his life, and that that sort of motivated you to get into this area because you didn't have to recover and help people. You could have just gone on your way. What, what happened that prompted you to become a recovery advocate? Yeah. Yeah. I, first, I just want to say to you, you bring up a great point in that, uh, you know, the, especially with the medications and prescription pills, there's, there's a danger that just goes unstated. You know, just because a doctor prescribed it, uh, just because it's in your mom's medicine cabinet or whatever else does not make it safe. And, um, you know, people don't understand the dangers and that's an important part of that. But um, yeah, I did. Uh, I lost a close friend of mine, Tom, this year to a drug overdose. And, um, you know, me and, and that was definitely a critical moment in my recovery because, you um, you know, all at once you see how this is really a life or death thing every day for us. And we have to constantly kind of be aware of that. Um, but as it relates really to your, your mission, I do think um, without sharing too many details, I do think it was related to some, some drugs that were not disposed of properly. And um, a, fam a close family member of his had passed recently, and I believe that there were some medications that um, could have could have played a factor in that. I believe it was a factor, and um, you know the truth is is like it it uh, it's a it's a major problem in America today, and COVID is has not to take COVID lightly, but the opioid epidemic in particular has been taking lives for many years. Right. Um, I mean, the numbers are staggering. They continue to get worse during this time. And uh, now it's just, you know, now's the time to kind of step up and for people that have the opportunity to share a voice and to share some experience and extend a hand of hope. Um, you know, that's, that's my personal mission. And that's why I think we click so well is we both see an opportunity there. And, um, you know, uh, losing Tom was a big part of my my decision to continue to help people in the community. Um, you know, I, I support people in the local recovery community here in Atlanta. And as you mentioned, you know, working online, trying to support people, extend my reach as far as I can go. I want to I awesome. help people. Awesome. I, and I applaud you for doing that and for uh, taking your grief and, you know, being productive with the energy that comes from that. You can really go to a dark place, but I believe I'm, like you, I'm a, a Christian. I, you know, that hadn't been part of our previous conversations, but I, and this is, you know, not just jury to me, but I know that uh, God doesn't waste wounds. Mm -hmm. And when we go through these challenges, even right now, we're supposed to do something with it. And, you know, to tie in with today is DEA Take Back Day. You can go to deatakeback.com 
And if you've had a family member, you know, at the end of life, they do get a lot of medications. Mm -hmm. And just to help them be comfortable, you can't keep those in the home. You shouldn't keep those in the home just in case so you can self-medicate, particularly um, not locked up. I've, you know, I've been in homes where people were, you know, just terminally ill and there's a table full of drugs because it's convenient for the caregiver or whatever. And we have a lot of people reach out to us as an organization, well, what do I do with them? Year round for free, you can dispose of medications at uh, pharmacies, at uh, certain police departments. They have to be DEA approved, but please don't just leave those in a cabinet in a drawer where children or adults or people cleaning your home or contractors working in your home. There's so many people who can take those drugs and you never notice. You don't want to contribute to someone else's uh, abuse and overdose. So I got to get on my soapbox, soapbox a little bit about drop the drugs uh, because we're you know, trying to do that prevention on the front end, but there's a very real fact of what Recovery Local is doing is that we have to help people who do uh, you know, become addicted and who do need help with recovery. And I'm so sorry for your loss uh, of your friend that had to be hard. So you're now with uh, Recovery Local. Uh, people can see the website right there with your uh, uh, screen, recoverylocal.org. There's lots of great information on there. Tell me how you connected with them. There are a lot of organizations doing this type of thing and some of your programs to help others. Yeah. Uh, so I, I connected through Recovery Local through a, a mentor and a friend of mine, Mike Smith, who um, I would really credit as someone as, who saved my life. And he is, um, you know, a passionate person about, you know, recovery and providing help for people. And he had this opportunity for, and really just, I'm just grateful that he saw something in me that could, that, you know, he he saw something in me that felt like he could trust me with this. And um, I'm blessed today. I work with people that share a very similar story to mine. Um, every day we go into work and, you know, we really talk about saving lives. And that's just, um, that's just what it's all about. And I'm, um, I've been blessed too, to be able to kind of dabble in some different things. Um, you know, I've done some, uh, some writing with them and I've done some uh, some research and today my job is excellent. I, I reach out and I talk to people like you, Dr. Mo, who have a vision and people who want to help. And my main job, my, rain, my main role is to connect people with online resources. Uh, just There's just so much out there. You'd be surprised how many times, you know, people might go to a website and they just don't have what people need. And um, you know, and and uh, and the case of drop the drugs, you guys had a, a lot of info on there, and um, detox was one that I, I wanted to recommend, and you know, but really I talk about everything. I mean, our our mission we don't just talk about drug prevention or detox, even though that's probably the number one focus. We we mm -hmm. want to help save save lives by, through suicide prevention, overdose prevention. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we work with uh, different entities to kind of improve their um, domestic violence resources, sexual assault. Let me I mean, just there. at range, yeah. You, and you are doing a lot of things uh, there on the website. And the piece about suicide prevention is so important. Those rates are rising, particularly in younger people. But mm -hmm. one of the two things I liked about the way you reached out to me, one, you weren't trying to sell something. So many people send uh, resources to our organization and you've seen our website and our resources. We're not about selling anything. We're an information hub and yeah, everybody's got to make a living. I understand that, but I'm not trying to promote a particular facility over another one. We'll give links that you find the one nearest you, but we're not trying to do that, but that you just reached out and said, hey, here's an area uh, for improvement and you suggested an opioid detox guide, which we did. I had my social media person post. That's, that's what made me reach back out to you because I'm like, I like the place that you approached me from. So you also said that at the universities, we talked about at the universities and on their website, sometimes they're also lacking resources. Can you share that a little bit? Because some educators may see this uh, later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. You know, first off, um, 
you know, it, a lot of people kind of take it, take this for granted, or maybe they don't realize that this is just the case, but, um, uh, you know, quarantine, isolation, um, you know, so social distancing, people are looking online for resources more than they ever had before. Um, there's sadly, there's been some reports too that recently indicate that only 38% of kids feel like their schools take mental health seriously. Wow. Uh, um, uh, you know, four in 10 students feel like they can't talk to their educators about how they're feeling or they're afraid to talk to their schools about their suicide ideation or, mm -hmm. or their addictions. Wow. And, and you know, it, um, there are plenty of opportunities for schools. There are a lot of schools to get it right. And that's a big part of what I do too, is I like to share best practices and say, you know, some schools have very definitive and well uh, thought out suicide prevention resources. What, what does get it right? Up. What does that look like? They have, I mean, mm -hmm. everybody's got a website, everybody's got a page. What what do they have? Because I'm concerned about that. I'm seeing it in, in 20 year olds and teens and I don't want them just wandering around on the web trying to find something, falling down a rabbit hole. What mm -hmm. The ones who get it right without saying names, what are some specific things that they employed that are helpful to students? Yeah, I think it's good to, uh, diversify the information that you have. I mean, you know, many times you'll see a hotline phone number and that's good. That's a good start. Um, but things that are often lacking for suicide prevention, uh, website information, uh, chat, you know, texting, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, sometimes uh, peer to peer resources can be really lacking. And so sometimes people might feel really comfortable talking to, you know, say a professional about it, but sometimes people just need another person in the world that's in the same space that they are in. So, so we recommend, you know, national hotlines, but web resources, chat resources, text resources, peer to peer resources. Um, yeah. And there are plenty of great opportunities plenty of great websites. So it's not a lack of resources. It's just a matter of saying, here are the resources. This is what we recommend you add based on what you have. So and, and that's what we've tried to do is we have a you know, we drop the drugs. We're not pretending like we've created anything, but we want to mm -hmm. have a database so that you don't have to go to so many uh, different sites. And I say that because some school districts, some universities might be like, we don't have a budget for this. COVID is, you know, this pandemic, the going online is killing us. But even if they link to the uh, National Alliance on uh, Mental Illness, NAMI, who I know you've worked with, if they link to, you know, a hotline or 24 hours seven, just, you know, give me a point of contact, a place to go. Because when you're in that state, and I, I've suffered from depression, when you're in that state, you're just not thinking clearly and strategically. And, mm -hmm. you know, any assistance somebody can give you, especially if you don't want to admit it, there's still a stigma on it to saying it. We had a, a football player here, um, Dak Prescott, who admitted that he had struggled with some depression. I was appalled with the reaction, I thought, here's a, a guy who's being transparent and honest and deserves support. And he had that horrible, uh, you know, accident happened during the game. But, you know, some people went in on him. So there is still, especially for guys, I, I think, uh, there's still this pressure to be Superman. And we're just not in the Superman and Superwoman time anymore. It's just, we're all, uh, COVID is like kryptonite to everybody. And, and it is okay to get mental health help. If, if my hand is sick, if my foot is sick, if my mind, my brain is sick, I need to get, I need to see a doctor They're just straight up, you know, and I'm a dentist, biology major. I, I'm all for getting help. People can, people want to help you like us. We want to give you resources. What can we do? So thank you for giving those, you know, concise, specific points. So for people like me who don't know, but want to help, they, I, I want people to have something to take away, not just theory. Here's something definite you can do. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah. We've talked about the importance of safe disposal, safe storage, inventory of drugs in your home. And when you emailed me as well, 
uh, you talked about the fact that failed, I'm reading your email, failed self-detox is a major factor in continued drug use and overdose. Tell me about that. I, I wasn't familiar with that term. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I mean, I, I appreciate you just taking that time because that's just, you know, detox and withdrawal information is by far the most commonly missed or underrepresented aspect of the drug quit, the, the whole process of quitting drugs. And so when, we, when I talk about detox, that is kind of the process of removing drugs and alcohol from your body. And it's uh, ultimately, you know, that's the first step in the process. And so the reason why that's important is because some people don't realize that they have a drug problem and the, the drug withdrawal symptoms that they're experiencing, they don't necessarily attribute to their drug problem. And so by getting information out about what drug withdrawal really is, what symptoms to look for, number one, that might tell somebody, you know, they, it might help them recognize that they have a problem. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't necessarily, um, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, they think, oh, well, I've got a job or I've got a car and I'm doing okay. They don't think they have a drug problem, but they have all these other symptoms and they're not necessarily putting the two together. The other part of that is that um, when people want to quit, they don't know how to do it properly. Mm. Um, they just think, oh, well, I'll just stop doing drugs or you know, I might do this or do that. And medical detox is the number one way to help people quit drugs safely because um, especially with opiates where the, uh, the symptoms of withdrawal can be really painful. Yeah. You don't have a doctor helping you. You're more likely to continue to using or continue to use drugs just to avoid the pain of, of quitting, even though the pain of using is still pretty strong. And yeah, so just connecting people with the fact that, you know, these symptoms they have are directly related to their drug use, that uh, seeing a medical professional to help them cleanse their body of the drugs and alcohol safely, um, and then connect them to future resources, whether it's rehab or uh, intensive, intensive outpatient or other programs, but, you know, people talk about rehab all the time. And the fact is, is you, you have to detox before you're going to go to rehab and, and drug, in the case of like drugs, like alcohol and, and, right. and other drugs, it can be deadly. If you try to quit on your own, you could die. And that's just, what? that's preventable. I'm glad you said that because we see so much on, uh, drama programs, these people, I'm going to go cold turkey. I'm just going to sweat it out, lock me in a room. Nobody come in and help me. And I, I haven't dealt with that process. It just looks horrid, uh, dramatized. And I would imagine it's worse uh, in real life. Why, why not do that though? Why not just lock yourself up and tough it out for a few weeks or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Um... You know, th that might work. Um, chances are it won't. Um, because, you know, especially with people that are doing drugs, if you're at that point, um, your body has become accustomed to drugs. Mm -hmm. Drugs like opioids disrupt pretty much every bodily system you have. And so when you stop using, your brain stops working properly, your heart stops working properly your renal system, your endocrine system, your body is just gonna go haywire. And they, you know, that I've heard that the term cold turkey comes from that because your body is like, you break out in goosebumps and you're sweating. And really? Yeah, that's, that's what I've heard. I mean, I'm no expert, but the fact is, is all those symptoms, those physical symptoms are a direct result of the damage that the drugs have done to your body. And so, recognizing that yeah i mean if you're lucky you might be able to survive that but what happens is either people continue to use because withdrawal feels so poor right. or um uh, you know or they you know might end up causing some damage to their body um and, and different drugs you know different drugs are going to be have different symptoms and that's part of why detox local is such a great resource because right. we they cover every 
not just opioids, every single drug you can think of has its own unique uh, symptoms to withdraw and detox. And we just like to get the word out so people know what to expect and how to quit safely. And, and you're doing a good job of it. And we've, we've posted a lot of uh, blogs and comments and, and videos. We just go out and curate things from different sites. And it, it, it is amazing. I know as a healthcare provider, but additionally, just what I've learned uh, in immersing myself in this space, uh, the impact in the hepatic system, the liver, uh, the damage that's being done there and how it's going to impact you in the future. You can't always fully recover those systems, you know, the central nervous system and the kidney, liver, heart that you can't completely recover that damage that you've done with long-term uh, use of these drugs. And even more concerning or as concerning is how just a small amount for a two or three year old getting into your cough syrup or your aspirin, because we also don't talk about the over-the-counter uh, drug effects and how you need to, you know, secure all drugs, not just the opioids, the pain meds, but all drugs for people who are allergic, for small kids, for elderly who might forget, did I take this yet? I guess I need to take it again. So many accidental overdoses. So, you know, just raising awareness like we're doing right here and this will be out there, we'll promote it. But, you know, if you're just joining us, this is Gary Bowers with uh, recoverylocal.org. He is, and I'm Dr. Mo Anderson, the founder and president of Drop the Drugs. You can learn more about both our organizations and uh, join us in combating this ongoing raging battle against addiction, which does, yes, pre predate uh, COVID and uh, unfortunately will probably continue after it because of how much more stress has been introduced to us. So we're going to uh, just kind of wrap up here. This we could we have talked a long time before. Uh, this is just a subject. It's not a necessarily a fun or funny topic, but it's it's important. And and that's what we've been trying to do in our series on uh, wellness and engagement. We spoke with someone, uh, a psychiatrist, about mental health uh, during COVID, uh, and. You know, which makes me think one of the things with withdrawal is trying to do it cold turkey. You haven't dealt with the emotional and mental aspects of it, uh, which is going to be part of it if you're working with professionals. Uh, we did a, we talked about dental care post COVID, what to expect when you go back to the dental office. We've spoken with a uh, former police chief uh, talking about uh, bias, uh, racism, uh, these things, you know, they factor into your health. They factor into how you relate to the world and certainly can cause a lot of stress on whatever side of the issues you're on. Uh, Long-term stress leads to behaviors, leads to consequences. It is just a downward spiral if you don't break up that cycle somewhere. So before we go, is there anything else that you're commonly asked that you wish people knew that you wish your 14, 15 year old self had known that might mm. help someone who's watching and struggling with addiction? Wow, yeah. Um, I would say, you know, in my, in my journey in this, in recovery, um, you cannot do this alone. Don't try to do it alone. There are millions of people out there like Dr. Mo and, and myself and just people are out there ready to help. So, uh, so many times people just think, oh, I'm, I'm gonna do this myself or uh, I'm gonna just lock myself in a room and that's just gonna solve my problem. It's not, you gotta get out. You have to be willing to offer or accept help. Um, and that was my secret, you know, but mm -hmm. when I was finally willing to say, hey, you know what? I need help. I do not know what I'm doing. Somebody, please help me. Uh, the moment I, I allowed that to happen, uh, flood just or uh, help just flooded into my life, you know. And so, you cannot do it alone. If you don't feel comfortable talking to somebody, go online, look for some resources, whether it's at your school, um, you know, a site like Drop the Drugs, obviously has tons of resources. Um, you know, if you're if you're one of my friends watching in the Metro Atlanta area, uh, you know, the summitwellnessgroup.com has a ton of ton of resources. There are people here that are just willing to help. So uh, please take the time to 
uh, you know, ask for help, detox, rehab, whatever it may be, it starts with that one word. And it's the hardest word to say, but it's help and people yeah. will be there for you. So. It takes so much courage and uh, takes a lot more courage to say that than to hide that you're struggling, that you're having a problem. Help mm -hmm. and I'm sorry. Those are some really hard <laughs> words <laughs> to say. I've got a lot of practice saying oh, yeah. that. Right. And it just defends his things. That's what I wish I told my 15 year old still just apologize. It doesn't matter who's wrong. But uh, you have been wonderful. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Uh, Gary Bowers at recoverylocal.org. Thank you and your team members and your organizations. I think I forgot to say that all of you have had firsthand uh, experience with addiction. So you're not theoretically telling people how it feels and uh, what to do and what can happen if you take advantage of the professional help out there. So thank you so much. We'll keep in touch uh, and just keep sharing resources and keep trying to uh, help people, no pun intended. Have mm -hmm. a good We appreciate right. thank you. it. Thank you. Drop the drugs. Thank you yes. very, very much. All right. Bye now. Bye.